Hi everyone. Today we we are continuing with the Income Tax Act and GST discussion on practical problems, and this is part three. We already discussed uh, uh problems from income of salary, income of house property, business capital gain, etc. In previous two parts, now we are going to discuss about some of the practical questions with respect to GST. So here first we are going to discuss in respect of scope of supply. So the first question here we have is Bunty and Bubbly, uh, Bunty and Bubbly Private Limited head office is at Hyderabad, Telangana, and various other branches in the state of Telangana. It also has 28 branches in all 28 states of India. The company is regularly supplying goods to its interstate branches, and during the month of September 2021, the company transferred goods worth 28 crores to all its 28. branches which comes under 12% rate of tax the company also transferred goods worth of 2 crore which fall under 18% rate of tax to its local branches means branches located in the state of telangana now the company has only registration in state of telangana are all goods transferred to branches is treated as supply mr clever accounts manager opinion is that branches transfer is not taxable under gst what is your suggestion to the management of the bunty and bubbly private limited so this is the question we have that is the first question under the scope of supply so here the answer discussed is as per section 7 sub clause 1 sub clause c read with schedule 1 of cgst act 2017 so as per section 7 sub clause 1 sub clause c read with schedule 1 of cgst act to, uh, 2017 supply of goods or service or both between distinct persons as specified in section 25 of cgst act when made in the course of the furtherance of business will be treated as supply even if made without consideration so as per section 25 sub clause 5 of cgst act where a person who has obtained or is, uh, or is required to obtain registration in a state or union territory in respect of any establishment has an establishment in another state or union territory then such establishments shall be treated as establishments of distinct person for the purpose of this act so this is discussed in section 25 of cgst in particular section 25 sub clause 5 of cgst act 2017 therefore interstate branches transfer of goods worth 28 crores from telangana head office to all its interstate branches will qualify as supply and taxable at 12% whereas interstate branch transfer of goods worth 2 crore is not treated as supply and not taxable because local branches not registered separately based on the same pan and therefore not to be treated as distinct person as mentioned in section 25 sub clause 5 of cgst act 2017 so here uh, the author has uh, also put a comment that is uh he does not agree with the opinion of mr clever accounts manager because interstate branches transfer is taxable under gst whereas intrastate branch transfer is not taxable under gst subject subject to provisions of section 25 sub clause 5 and in this case the intrastate branches are not registered separately so intrastate branches transfer of bunty and bubbly private limited is not treated as supply so not taxable so the intrastate uh, supply in this particular case is not taxable and interstate supply was trans uh, is taxable and the sections discussed here is section 7 sub clause 1 sub clause c read with schedule 1 of cgst act 2017 and section 25 sub clause 5 of cgst act 2017 now we have question number 2 that is mr g a v s s gopal srinivas ram reddy 
is dealer of air conditioners. He permanently transferred five air conditions worth two lakh from his stock in trade to his residence for personal use. Well, uh, will this transaction constitute a supply? So, he is a dealer of air conditioners and he transferred five air conditions each worth of two lakh to his uh, to his house for personal use. So, will this uh, transaction constitute a supply? Now, the answer to this, yes, as per section one, num uh, as per serial number one of schedule one, that is serial number one of schedule one, permanent transfer or disposal of business assets where, where input tax credit has been availed on such assets shall constitute a supply under GST even when no consideration is involved. Once again, serial number one of schedule one, that is permanent transfer or disposal of business assets where input tax credit has been availed on such asset shall constitute a supply under GST even when no consideration is involved. Therefore, it is treated as supply assuming that input tax credit availed at the time of purchase of air conditioners. Now, secondly, as per the provisions of section 17 sub clause 5, the input tax credit has block on personal use of goods. Therefore, if dealer is not issued the tax invoicing regarding the five air conditioners for personal use, then input tax credit on inwardly supply of five air conditioners must be reversed by the dealer with applicable interest. And then we have next question that is question number three. Mr. Natwarlal and individual bought a SUV car worth of 25 lakh for his personal use and after a year sold it to a car dealer. The sales officer of the car dealer opined that such transaction is treated as supply and hence taxable under GST. Will the transaction be a supply in terms of CGST or SGST Act? Now give reasons for the answer. So the answer to this. No, because the sale of old and used car by an individual is not in the course of furtherance of business and hence does not constitute supply. It is to be noted that if car used for business purpose or furtherance of business, then it is treated as supply and hence taxable. Now to question number four. Yummy Yummy and Company, a partnership firm, is a caterer and contractor. He used various goods for, sub, goods for supply of his service. The GST rates on outward supply of goods used by Yummy Yummy and Company is 12%, whereas service comes under 18% tax lab. The partners, uh, partners of the firm approached to Mr. Bir, Birbal, a GST consultant, for his expert advice. And Mr. Bebel advised that carrier caterer and contractor transactions treated as supply of goods. The supply of goods and not supply of services. So Yummy Yummy and company followed the advice of Mr. Bebel and filed form GSTR 3B while treated as goods and paid tax at 12%. The GST officer issued a notice to Yummy Yummy and company to pay tax at 18% because Contractor and caterer transaction covered under services, not as goods. One of the partner approached again to Mr. Babel and Mr. Babel confused and approached to you. Whether works, contracts and catering services will be treated as supply of goods or supply of services. Suggest to Mr. Babel. So if it's supply goods, the person is uh, has to pay the tax at 12% rate and if it's supply of service at 18% rate. So Babel initially uh, advised him to consider it as a uh, supply of goods and uh, suggested 12, uh, paying tax at 12%. Then the officer gave a notice that it is to, uh, supply of service and the, he should pay, the Yummy Yummy and company should pay tax at 18%. So the uh, GLC, uh, GST consultant Babel got confused and approaches you for suggestion. Now the answer to this. As per serial number 6 of Schedule 2 of CGST Act 2017, 
activities or transactions to be treated as supply of goods or services. Now, composite supply. The following composite supplies shall be treated as supply of services, namely A. Works contract and defined in clause 119 of section 2 and B. Supply by way of by way of or as part of any service or in any other manner whatsoever of goods being food or any other article for human consumption or any drink other than alcoholic liquor for human consumption where such supply or service is for cash deferred payment or other valuable consideration therefore works contracts and catering services shall be treated as supply of service as both are specified under se uh, serial number 6 of schedule 1 uh, schedule 2 sorry schedule 2 serial number 6 of schedule 2 that is clause a and clause b now gst officers contention is correct in the case or case and advise yummy yummy and company to pay tax at 18 percent because their transaction comes under the supply of services not as supply of goods so that is with respect to this question now we have question number five that is so soft high tech private limited based at hyderabad is dealing in development of software the head of the company approached to you to know that supply of software would be treated as supply of goods or supply of service under gst law kindly advise properly so the supply of software is it supply of service or supply of goods that is the question here with respect to gst law the answer development design programming customization adaptation upgradation enhancement implementation implementation of uh, information technology software shall be treated as supply of services as listed in serial number 5 sub clause 2 sub clause d of schedule 2 so it will be treated as services supply of services as per serial number 5 sub clause 2 sub clause d of schedule 2 activities to be treated as supply of goods or supply of service that is given in schedule number 2 of the gst law now therefore so soft high tech private limited company supply of software would be treated as supply of services now on to few questions with respect to input tax credit so the first question here is gojia and company manufactures goods and uh, rendering service now gojia and company purchase raw materials capital goods and also avail services of various professionals and incurred expenditures on various head where firm paid tax as rates prescribed in gst law the head of the firm had some doubt on availing of input tax credit and he approached to you and asked does input tax include that is cgst or igst or sgst paid on input goods input services and capital goods he also asked my firm is registered as regular supplier under gst does gst paid on purchase of raw materials expense fixed assets and professional charge paid to the professional available for the input tax credit he further asked where the goods against and invoices are received in lots or installments how will a registered person be entitled to itc so here goji and company manufactures they uh, they manufactures goods and rendering service and they have purchased raw materials capital goods etc and on these goods they have paid cgst igst sgst etc so the question here is can they avail input tax credit on this raw materials for the tax they paid on the raw materials and further he asked my firm is registered by regular supplier under gst does gst paid on purchase of raw materials expense fixed assets and professional charges paid to professionals available for input tax credit so this is the main question here and it is also given whether goods against an invoice are received in lots or installment how will a registered person be entitled to income tax credit so the answer to this 
yes it includes uh, it includes taxes paid on input uh, goods input services and capital goods credit of tax paid on capital goods is permitted to be availed in one installment it is to be noted that it must be capital goods and goods must be movable so yes it includes tax paid on input goods input services and capital goods credit of tax paid on capital goods is permitted to be availed in one installment it is to be noted that it must be capital goods and goods must be movable now goji and company is entitled to take credit of input tax charge on supply of goods or service or both which are used or intended to be used in the course of furtherance of business and subject to eligibilities and conditions mentioned in section 16 of cgst act 2017 and restrictions which is a negative list given in section 17 sub clause 5 of cgst uh, act 2017 input tax credit on purchases from composition supplies is not available for input tax credit the registered person shall be entitled the registered person shall be entitled to the credit only upon receipt of the last lot or installment so that is the answer to this we have to know that the registered person shall be entitled to the credit only upon the receipt of the last lot or installment so we are moving on to the second question under input tax credit here the head of goji and company wants to know that the conditions necessary for obtaining income tax credit kindly guide him so the answer to this following four conditions are to be satisfied by the registered taxable person for obtaining income tax credit a he is in possession of tax invoice or debit note or such other tax paying documents that is such as bill of entry or any other documents prescribed under the customs act input service distributor invoice as prescribed in rule 36 sub clause 1 of cgst rules so the first condition is that he should be in possession of tax invoice or debit note or such other tax paying document now the second condition is that he has received the goods or services or both third condition the supplier has actually paid the tax charged in respect of the supply to the government and the fourth condition he has furnished the return under section 39 the fifth condition and the last condition amount should be credited to electronic credit ledger and subject to provisions of rule 36 sub clause 4 of cgst rules 2017 so the last condition is that amount should be credited to electronic credit ledger and subject to provisions of rule 36 sub clause 4 of cgst rules 2017 moving on we are going to discuss the third question under income tax credit that is mr conman a registered regular supplier under gst he takes input tax credit without payment of consideration for the supply along with the tax to the supplier he seeks your advice about the consequence uh, if any so the answer yes mr corn man as a receipt can take income tax credit or itc but he is required to pay the consideration along with the tax within 180 days from the date of issue of invoice this condition is not applicable where tax is payable on reverse charge basis the amount of income tax credit would be added to the output tax liability of mr conman he would also be required to pay interest however he can take income income tax credit again on payment of consideration and tax now moving on to the fourth question here mr belram is a supplier of goods and received order which to uh, okay mr belram is a supplier of goods and recipient order order him to deliver goods to the third party in this case who will get the income tax credit where goods have been delivered to a person other than taxable person that is 
build to ship to scenario so this is a build to ship to scenario and uh, here okay in this case who will get the income tax credit where goods have been delivered to a person other than taxable person so the answer to this it would be deemed that the registered person has received the goods when the goods have been delivered to a third party on the direction of such taxable person so it is deemed to be registered uh, received by the taxable person or the registered person so income tax credit will be available to the person on whose order the goods are delivered to the third person now question number 5 Mr X registered taxable person has claimed depreciation on the tax component of the cost of capital goods under the provisions of income tax act 1961 with income tax credit b will income tax credit b allowed to him in this case the answer the input tax credit shall not be allowed on the said tax component in respect of which depreciation has been claimed Now question number six. Mr. Manoj Tiwari is a taxable person. He is in the business of information technology. He bought a motor vehicle for use of one of his executive director. Can he avail the income tax credit in respect of GST paid on the purchase of such motor vehicle? The answer is no. Income tax credit on motor vehicles can be availed. only if the taxable person is in the business of transport of passengers or goods or is providing the service of imparting training on motor vehicles now the seventh question this uh, mrs banerjee is a supplier of goods the goods transported from one place to another sometimes goods are destroyed or lost due to various reasons can mrs banerjee take income tax credit to the extent of such goods now the answer is no uh, mrs banerjee cannot take income tax credit with respect to goods st uh, lost stolen or destroyed or returned off as per the provisions of section 17 sub clause 5 of cgst act 2017 in addition itc with respect uh, of goods given as gift or free samples are also not allowed so that is the answer with this so with this we are winding up the few problem discussion with respect to gst now we have some important case laws of gst that will be uh, discussed in a separate uh, separate video we have about uh, 10 to 12 and then further we have 10 to 12 case laws further we have also have a question bank uh where we don't have answers so we will be uh, casually discussing which sections are applicable here or which case law will be applicable applicable in each cases that is with respect to the question bank that is will that will also be held in a another video so thank you all for listening to all uh, to this part if you have not heard the part 1 and part 2 please listen to it part 1 and part 2 is with respect to income tax act and part 3 with respect to gst and if you have any suggestion or any correction you please drop a message in the uh, comment box and please let me know if you like the video if it uh, if it's easy for you to understand and thank you for watching thank you now please like like subscribe and click the bell bell button so you stay updated once i upload a video thank you for your support have a nice day